Hello, I'd like to show you how I mix my compensator cleaning solution or, or a suppressor cleaning solution. Uh, yeah, I've been, the reason why I'm doing this video is I've, I've seen a lot of uh, videos pop up on YouTube uh, using vinegar and uh, hydrogen peroxide. And that's what I'm going to show you. We're going to use the same thing. But there's a lot of caution that goes into this when you're using this product. Because what you're doing is you're creating paracetic acid. When you mix vinegar or acetic acid, which is nothing more than acid diluted down to about 5% solution, it's distilled like vinegar. And then also just a 3% solution of your hydrogen peroxide. When you mix those two together, it's called paracetic acid. Paracetic acid is very corrosive to soft metals. And let me show you a 22 round that was soaked in that solution overnight. And you can see how that's eroded away. It's eaten half the, half the casing. That's how corrosive it is. Now this is a shell on, on this side that was soaked in Slip 2000 Carbon Killer Bore Cleaner. It's not going to clean your compensators. And that's what this was soaked in overnight. Now some safety rules with using this. Make sure you wear, you wear uh, protective gloves, either latex or nitrile gloves. Nitrile gloves tend to work better. They don't get sticky like the uh, latex gloves do and they don't turn yellow on you. You want to make sure you wear safety goggles or safety glasses. You don't want to splash it in your eye. It will burn you. It will also burn your skin. So you want to be careful of that. The most important thing is you don't want to breathe this. Parasitic acid is extremely irritating to the lungs, eyes, nose, throat. It's just, it's nasty. It smells like super strong vinegar, very, very vinegar pungent smell when you mix these two together. Now, now my bottles I have labeled, so you want to keep everything labeled. My containers I use 8 ounce containers. This is my mix. This, uh, there's three different mixes I use. One is a hot mix, and I'm sure you can read that if you uh, pause your camera. You can write these mixes down. I have a hot mix that I use, a medium mix, and a mild mix. Now these mixes I've been using for about 35 years. I used to own a company that used to remanufacture automotive parts. And when cleaning metal parts, you go through a lot of solution. We had a, we had a six person shop running seven days a week. Well, we had to end up manufacturing all our own cleaning chemicals. And the reason why is because our chemical cost got so high. So this product I've been using for 35 years, right around 35 years. You want to be careful with it. It will definitely clean these compensators like brand new. Here's a tandem cross compensator that has well over 5,000 rounds put through it. You can see it's like brand new on the inside. And on the outside, it's like brand new. If you use these mixes, it's not going to harm your finishes. It's not going to harm the aluminum. It's not going to harm the uh, black oxide coating or the anodized coated aluminum. Here's a Volkortsen that I'm going to clean and I'll show you on a video that's coming up. Uh, the videos, every one of these clean a little bit differently and I'll be uh, doing those videos right before Thanksgiving. But you can see that carbon haze on the outside. It'll clean all that off. It'll clean all the inside of the compensator off. Your, uh, your barrel thread adapters, it'll clean them like new. So your mix is going to be either a hot mix, medium mix, or mild mix, depending on how quick, quickly and how dirty these compensators are and how long you want to either manually soak them or use the ultrasonic cleaner. And the videos will go through all of that. Cleaning them, some are more finicky than others. Uh, the reason why I'm not doing those videos until right before Thanksgiving is pretty much everything you see here comes in a compensator cleaning kit, including the compensator brushes. Different brushes designed to clean the different ports on the different compensators. So that's why we're not doing that video. But getting back to the safety rules of this, you don't want to breathe it. You want to make sure that as soon as you mix, this is a six ounce mix. The reason why I do six ounces in an eight ounce container for this size compensators, you don't want to mix a large volume of this, like a big container of it, because of the, the vapors that come off of it. You don't want to be breathing it. 
you want to close it immediately. As soon as you mix it, you close it up. When that compensator goes in this mix, whether you're going to soak it or use it in your ultrasonic cleaner, the lid goes on immediately. You want to always be in a well-ventilated room, in a garage somewhere, somewhere where you have good airflow. Your second mix is going to be your neutralizing cleaner. That's going to be six ounces of water, one half teaspoon of baking soda or sodium bicarbonate, which I keep in this container, and then one half teaspoon of palm oil of dish liquid. I use the original. You can use Dawn or whatever dish liquid you want to use. And that's going to be pretty much close to a neutral uh, 7.2, maybe 7.2 on the pH scale. And then you want to add your your baking soda. What that's going to do, that's going to bump it up if you take a, a pH meter and actually test that. So that's going to bring it up around 8 or maybe a little bit higher than 8. So you're going to go from about 7 up around 8 or a little higher than 8. What that's going to do is when you pull the compensator out of this solution, whether it's using the ultrasonic cleaner or you're going to soak it manually, you want to go from A to B to neutralize it before you handle it and start brushing it with your brushes. <clears throat> then, when you when you're, uh, do your final rinse, you can use bottled water, reverse osmosis water, or distilled water. I use my reverse osmosis water because it only comes out to about 10 parts per million, meaning I can just shake that compensator, set it aside, especially on these nice glossy compensators, you won't get any water spots. So that's the basic rules of the road with this stuff. You just want to be cautious with it and I'm, like I said, I'm going to be doing those videos on all these different compensators. One of the hardest compensators to clean out there, believe it or not, is the Tandem Cross. But there's different methods that you use with, with different compensators. And I'll go through all of those. All these compensators have quite a few thousands of rounds put through them. The compensators that you see now, they are dirty, but they only have about 250 to 300 rounds put through them. The key to keeping a clean compensator is clean it. Roll up, my rule of thumb is I clean it every time I clean my guns. I use the ultrasonic cleaner for my guns and for all my compensators. And if you do that, if you keep up the cleaning, it, the, they clean pretty quick. Now, if you have a compensator that has four, five, six thousand rounds through it, these ports are literally starting to get clogged on you. You can still clean them back to new but it's going to take some time. You're going to have to repeat the process over and over and over. And I'll go through that on the video. Anyways, I think I went over pretty much the safety rules on using this. Um, just be careful when you use it. If you use it properly, you'll, it's, it's safe to use. But you just got to follow the basic rules. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video and look forward to my videos on cleaning, how to clean all these compensators and your barrel thread adapters. Thank you.